there's no such thing as too much Batman. And I just got this in today and I am super excited. So this is the newer Batmobile that McFarlane announced just a little bit ago and it finally just released. And so we're gonna do a comparison of this Batmobile versus this Batmobile. And then we'll do a comparison of this 1989 Batman versus the other 1989 Batmans. So stick around and we're gonna get right into it. So here's the original McFarlane Batmobile and then here's our new one. You can see, I think fairly clearly that the real difference is just that this has a matted paint job. And this one, it's not painted at all. As far as I can tell, it just kind of came from factory like this in terms of uh, the, the paint or lack of paint applications. So this is the wing from that side and I just really want to show that you can see that even though I can make a reflection happen on the inner part of it, that reflection isn't happening on there too. So it really is painted and it's a pretty good job. Besides the body getting the paint job, the canopy also got the paint job. So if you look closely, we can see that the canopy on this side has a gray as opposed to a black. And while this one is a little bit lighter in color than this, I think it still matches much, much closer than this ever did here. So there's tons of tutorials online about how to paint this and things like that. But if you're able to get your hands on this one, then you don't have to worry about that at all anymore. The turbine appears to be exactly the same. Our lights in front appear to be exactly the same. From the side, you can see that our silver painted here is pretty much exactly the same too, but it's the wheels that are different. And so uh, the first thing that you'll notice is that there's silver here and there's not silver here. However, when looking at clips of the movie, I can't find any clips of it showing silver on the rim of it. And it looks more like this one. As far as the bat symbol, that one, I think this one is correct with it being silver compared to the more bronze uh, look of this one. Kind of weird that this is painted silver, especially since I can't find any clips of it being silver, but here is a shot from the backside and this is basically the same. I can't really see any differences myself, but if you're aware of any, then definitely let me know in the comments as well. I don't think there were very many complaints about the backside of this, so uh, I don't really see any reason for McFarlane to have changed anything. Taking a look at the inside of the canopy, as far as paint apps go, it does look pretty much the same too. I can't really see any differences. We're also not really seeing any of the matted paint on the inside uh, where the seating is. Not that it needed it, but something to know. So here we are with McFarlane's take on the 1989 version of Michael Keaton, Batman. So uh, just real quick, I do want a comparison against his first version of Michael Keaton Batman. And now obviously this one is from the Flash movie where his costume is different, not exactly like the ones from the original films, but it's an interesting comparison because you can see a huge difference in the faces. So as you can see on the left hand side, I think it doesn't really look that much like him at all. I think it could really be anybody. And maybe that's because of the way that the mask is designed as far as the actual costume goes. And there's not a whole lot that McFarlane could do but I think he did a much better job with this new 1989 version. It definitely looks much more like him, maybe not exactly, but way closer than this version over here. Otherwise, this one is a pretty solid figure overall if you're looking for a Michael Keaton Batman. The bent ear is kind of a bummer, but that should be an easy fix with some hot water. I think my one gripe right off the bat is that the gold on the bat symbol is the wrong color. And so it's the same gold as this one. And this looks fine, but it should not match. So you can see on our other Batmans that the yellow on the bat symbol is more of a yellow and not a gold. Uh, for me, that's a strike and that's a pretty jarring thing, especially because I'm so familiar with this costume uh, for it to be so different like that. But that's probably an easy fix with a bit of yellow. The other problem that I have with it is that it's completely gold and it should be black going around and even the edge of it should be black too. So you can see it's got a lip around the edge and that should be black. So that's also a relatively easy fix with a bit of paint, but still, that's just coming from factory and how it looks. I'm not too mad at the, the paint job and how it's a little bit missing there because that's also a, a pretty easy fix. And I'd say also not super easy to get done perfectly at factory. So I'm not going to knock that one. Otherwise, I would say costume accuracy is really high. So let's do a comparison against the NECA version. And this is the NECA version with a custom cape, not the official NECA cape. But we're using this one to show how the costume looks. NECA is generally very good about making accurate replicas of the characters that they make figures for. And so we can see that the gauntlets uh, look the same. We've got the lines going down uh, on the forearm as well as on the gloves. The abs are pretty much the same as well. And that is worth pointing out because in the Batman Returns costume, the abs look very different. So uh, this looks pretty good overall. The build is pretty good overall. I would actually say that the um, these 
pellet things that are on the side should be just a little bit closer inwards rather than being like right at the hip but that's not too bad moving down the boots definitely look uh, really good as well they look uh, pretty much exactly the same in terms of their design one of my other nitpicks about this is that you can actually kind of see the difference in color of plastics between the knee and the rest of the leg it looks almost more like a dark blue than a black and the figure looks a little blue in general to me on camera but in real life it does look black but the knee still looks a little blue to me in real life as well so it's kind of weird otherwise i think it's a great figure overall and i am going to be doing a comparison of this one compared to the one that comes in the six pack so subscribe if you want to see how that comes out and my only other gripe is the same gripe that i've had with the other batman figures from mcfarlane uh, with the cloth capes while i like the fact that he's doing a cloth cape i think his execution is uh, pretty crappy this is basically the same thing as what the original NECA one was like and it's not a good look if anything i think that one would look way better on this one than this one does i do get that the point of the cloth cape was so that it could fit into the batmobile but i think with as good as mcfarland's figures can be i think he could do a way better job with these capes so let's see how he'd look inside the batmobile Here's the new McFarlane Batman in the Batmobile. It does look pretty good. However, his ears do need to be tucked behind uh, this lip uh, like so many of the other ones. If you haven't seen that video, I've done two different videos comparing a lot of different Batmans and how they fit in the Batmobile. And you can check that out right here. Otherwise, here's how it looks all closed up and that looks pretty cool too. So that's something you can do. Let's do a face comparison of all of our different 1989 Batman figures. So here's a comparison of the NECA Batman and our McFarlane Batman. I feel like the mouth does look really good overall. It definitely looks a lot like Michael Keaton's mouth, to me at least. Um, and if anything, seeing this next to this one, this looks less like Keaton now um, when I see it compared to this guy over here. But with that said, here's our SH Figure Arts Batman versus our McFarlane Batman. And I've never really found the SH Figure Arts one to look that much like Michael Keaton. Um, I know they're trying, but it's not that great to me. I'd say the McFarlane one definitely looks better in that regard. And finally, a comparison with the Mezco one. And the Mezco one has a very strong resemblance to Keaton. And I think definitely still beats the McFarlane one, but the McFarlane still stands pretty well on its own. Here's a height comparison with the figure arts, the McFarlane, the Mezco, and the NECA, of course. And so obviously all of these costumes are supposed to be the same costume and you get an idea of uh, the differences between the different manufacturers. So if you can get this one, I'd say it's a pretty solid pick. However, the Batmobile is definitely sold out and I do believe that the uh, six pack one is also sold out. So I'd not be surprised if McFarlane does a solo release of that one. But if he doesn't, then I'll be especially surprised if he doesn't do it. I would like to see a version of the Batman Returns costume, which is mostly the same, except the abs and the bat symbol. It's just a little bit different, but it would be cool to see. And otherwise, if you want to see my comparison video of the NECA one versus the knockoff version that you get from China for like 15 bucks, then check out my video over here.